Welcome to my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will cover all string methods. String is one of the built-in data types in Python, and like everything else, data types are also objects in Python. String objects are instances of class string. If you call built-in function type on a string object, it will return class string as shown in this example. The string class contains different methods. To get the complete list of all methods of the string class, you can call built-in function directory on a string object. This will also print all special methods which start and end with double underscore. These special methods are not part of this tutorial. However, I have already covered most of these methods in one of my other tutorials. So let's start with our first method, capitalize. The capitalize method capitalizes the first character in the string. Capitalize method returns only a copy and doesn't change the original string. If the string literal already contains capital letters other than the very first letter, the capitalize method converts them into lowercase. Now let's move to next method casefold. To understand casefold method, we first need to understand lower method. The lower method converts all letters within a string to lowercase. In this example, I have string my string one, which contains uppercase as well as lowercase letters. Now when I call lower method, lower method returns a copy of my string in which all letters are in lowercase. The casefold method is very similar to the lower method, but it is more aggressive because it is intended to remove all case distinctions within a string. In German language, the alphabet sharp s can also be written as double s. So if you have German letter sharp s in your string and you call casefold method, casefold method also converts the German letter sharp s to double s. Whereas when you call lower method, the German letter sharp s will not be converted to double s. Now let's move to next method center. The center method takes two arguments, width and fill care. Whereas the argument fill care is optional, and it is used for padding. Center method centers a string so that it fits within the number of spaces specified by width argument. In this example, I have 14 character long string literal. Now if I want to put 10 empty spaces at both ends of my string, I can call the center method with width parameter set to 34, which is the old width plus new width. As you can see the output, my new string is now centered and it has 10 empty spaces on both ends. Now if I want to have any character instead of empty spaces, I can use the fill care argument. Now when I print my string, you can see my string has 10 hash characters on both ends. Ljust and Rjust methods are just like center method, but Ljust method aligns the string left and Rjust right, as shown in these examples. The count method returns the number of occurrence of a substring sub within a string. By default, the start index argument is set to 0 and the end index argument is set to total length of the string. In this example, I count the occurrence of capital and small letter A within my string. In my next example, I have set the start index argument to 10 and end index argument to 30. Now the count method only counts the occurrence of alphabet A only within the substring from index value 10 to 30. Now let's move to next method encode. Encode method returns a bytes object. Bytes is an another data type in Python and it contains sequence of 8 bit values. To understand encode method, let's see an example. In this example, I have string hello world. And when I call encode method on a string, the encode method returns a bytes object, having UTF-8 encoding set by default. If you print any bytes object, any byte within bytes object that maps to ASCII code will be printed as original character, while others as hexadecimal codes. Now in next example, I have German letter umlaut O in my string. Now when I call encode method, the encode method creates a bytes object. And when I print my bytes object, the German letter umlaut O within the bytes object will be printed as hexadecimal code. This hexadecimal code is unique for German letter umlaut O within the UTF-8 encoding set. Now I have set the encoding argument to Latin 1. Now if you look at the output, the German letter umlaut O has now different hexadecimal code, which is again unique within the Latin 1 encoding set. Now when I set encode argument to ASCII, encode argument raises an exception. This is because using ASCII encoding you cannot encode a string that contains known English alphabets. 
To avoid such exceptions, you can set the third argument errors, which is by default set to strict to ignore. The ignore keyword tells the Python interpreter to ignore everything you cannot encode and don't throw an exception. Now the output is still a byte subject, but it doesn't contain the German letter umlaut o. Similarly, you can have other values for the errors argument, like replace, which replaces malform data with a suitable replacement marker, such as question mark. For all encoding and errors argument, please go to the Python documentation. Now let's move to next method ends with. This method returns true if the string ends with the given suffix. Otherwise, it returns false. Start and end are optional arguments which are used to limit the search within the string. The starts with method is very similar to ends with method, except it checks for the prefix string. Now let's look at very simple method expand tabs. The expand tabs method replaces all tabs within a string with one or more spaces, depending on the current column and the given tab size. By default, tab size is set to 8. Now let's move to next method find. Find method takes a substring sub as an argument and returns its beginning index in the string, or it returns minus 1 if the substring is not in the string. Find method also takes two optional arguments, start and end, which limit the search within the string. In this example, I'm calling find method with different substrings. Because there's no substring z in my string 1, find method returns minus 1. Whereas for substring n, find method returns the index value 5, which is the first occurrence of alphabet n in my substring 1. A substring can be a single alphabet or a string literal, and you can also limit the search by setting start and end arguments. Our find method is very similar to find method, but it searches from right to left. The index method is very similar to find method, but unlike find method, which returns minus 1 when the substring is not found within the string, index method raises the value error exception. The R index method is like R find method, but it raises value error exception if the substring is not found within the string.